Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cryptocurrent. Your host here, Richard Carthon. And um, I'm going to switch it up a little bit today. So not only am I going to be doing your podcast uh, through your ears, but I'm also going to have some visuals with me today. Um, my producer is starting to work on uh, the visual side of production. And uh, so for a special treat, uh, this is going to be the first episode that is also going to be recorded uh, with a video. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, shout out to Andrew for hooking that up today. So in the last week, I've had a lot of conversations with various people um, in talking about you know the upcoming conference that's happening March 15th here in New Orleans. And as I began to explain, you know, what is cryptocurrency, what is blockchain, and like really getting to sit down and explain this to people, um, there's a reoccurring theme that keeps appearing. The biggest hurdle that a lot of people have uh, in those conversations is that no one has taken the time to break down uh, the opportunities that are in cryptocurrency and blockchain and explaining what is Bitcoin, what is blockchain and all these different things. And I know for uh, the beginning part of my podcast of Cryptocurrent, I wouldn't explain that, but I thought I would take some time today to really make sure I go and explain you know, the basics. And so today is going to be purely about the basics. For all of those who are deep into crypto, uh, this might not be for you, but it could be a great refresher. So I would challenge you to stay tuned in. But for everyone else, if you are new to the game, if you know a little bit, but don't really know how to break it down and explain it to somebody else, I am going to give you my uh, best case of here's how you can explain cryptocurrency blockchain 101 to someone new. So here we go. So let's start first with uh, cryptocurrency and let's start first with Bitcoin. So first, why was Bitcoin made in the first place? 2008 happened and when 2008 happened, you know, that was the recession. The recession that happened in the United States and happened globally uh, where a lot of people in the housing market, uh, everything got inflated and the market crashed. In response to that, uh, this group of people or person named uh, Satoshi Nakamoto uh, who no one really knows who that person or persons are is and they came together and decided that no central entity should be allowed to have that large of an effect on just the not only just the United States economy but the world economy so they decided how can we decentralize uh, the world of value and, and the money uh, system that is put in place so they started on a project called Bitcoin and what makes Bitcoin unique is five characteristics. So number one, decentralization. No one central entity owns it. So in the same way with any of your banking systems, uh, with any time that you send money, it always goes through your bank. Uh, through Bitcoin, they wanted it to be person to person, peer to peer, business to business, uh, it is basically a, a straight path of direction. There's no third party. Uh, it is direct, it is decentralized. Number two, finite supply. So why I do a lot of not just countries uh, get in trouble, uh, but uh, the world economies get in trouble is because governments go and print more money, which causes inflation. Prime examples, you got Zimbabwe, uh, you have Venezuela, uh, United States have done it quite a few times. Whenever you run out of money, you just go print more and hope that solves your problems, and it doesn't. It, it lowers the cost of your money. And so what to offset this when Bitcoin's first being created, they had a, a limited supply. So there's 21 million Bitcoins that will ever be created ever. And like that is all that is going to be in supply. So one of the questions that usually comes in response to that is, okay, so is it possible that someone could just end up buying up all the Bitcoins uh, and, and now only a couple of big entities own most of the supply of Bitcoin? And my answer to that is no, because of one of the other characteristics of Bitcoin. Uh, it's divisibility. It can be, div um, it is divisible into a um, hundred millionth of a percent. So, you know, with our money, uh, it goes to one cent the lowest you can go. Uh, with this, it goes like point zero 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 uh, zero before it can, it, it can be divided that low. And so, of course, with it being divided that low, you can have a percentage of something. So even when there's 21 million uh, coins in circulation, because it can be divided so low, uh, obviously, there's more room for people to be able to have and own uh, this type of value. So the next part of it, uh, remember that it's decentralized. There is a finite supply. It is 
divisible, and that uh, division is called a Satoshi uh, for anyone who wants to know that. The next part is that it is built on blockchain, which makes it immutable. So what does immutable mean? So that means once it is put on the, block, on the blockchain, it cannot be undone. So a couple of things with that, I'm gonna get into blockchain in a second, but let's just stay there. So basically, if I were to send you um, $1,000 right now, and I did that uh, via Bitcoin, I did that via uh, decentralized money, as soon as I send that off, there's no clawing back. It's it's, it's one one and done transaction. Uh, I can't do that. Whereas with the bank, if I were to send a thousand dollars, let's say I mess up, and um, I need to get that money back because there is usually some uh, time in between the transaction. The bank can rectify it. You can get your money back, uh, and and everything's good. Now with uh, Bitcoin, for example, Bitcoin. Whenever you have your address, so whenever you are receiving Bitcoin or whenever you're giving Bitcoin, uh, there is a 26 to 34 character um, long address that you are given. So when you have that address and you try to send your money, you send it to a very specific address. If you miss one letter, if you miss one number, you have sent that money to the wrong person or to the wrong account or wherever it is. So, and I'll get into this a little bit later as well, uh, Bitcoin isn't super easy to use right now. And a lot of these other um, cryptocurrencies aren't super easy to use right now, but they will be. So there's a lot of uh, security issues that come up uh, because the usability is just not as simple as it could be and can be, but it will get there um, with time. So uh, after talking about immutability, uh, let's go to um, the, the final thing that makes uh, Bitcoin as great as it is. So it's you can be semi-anonymous. Now, that is both good and that is bad. Now, when you're talking about why it's good, so if I were to uh, send my money to uh, this unknown address, now remember going back to blockchain, because it is on the blockchain and it is irreversible, you can always fo follow the money. There's always gonna be a paper trail. You might not know uh, who is the recipient of your money or where you're sending it, but you can always follow it because of blockchain. So that's one thing. So the other bad part about it is obviously there can be some shady things that happen in the background of sending money um, if it's semi-anonymous. Um, money laundering can happen. Uh, people trying to wash their money uh, with that. And then, of course, you know, people could use it for buying illegal things. And uh, there are a lot of bad use cases that can come with it. But for the most part, and why this will be good is that... Bitcoin as a whole, with the five unique characteristics that it has, um, solves some immediate problems in the sense of um, money transactions, um, how quick it is, people being responsible for their own money, not letting one central entity being able to mess it all up. Um, but it also gives, uh, you don't have to deal with conversion rates a lot. Whether I'm in um, New Orleans, Louisiana, or if I go to Tokyo, or if I go to London, everyone has a rate that that bitcoin is worth right now so there's not a conversion rate that we have to worry about it's this is what it is worth if i try to send ten thousand dollars in euros to someone in london um or in yen to 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 someone in um japan obviously there's going to be conversion rates um it's going to take a lot of time and it's going to i'm going to probably lose money a, a prime example i have of this i have a colleague who was working out in the Philippines. And what ended up happening was he had uh, money that he was making, he was sending back to US to, protect, uh, to take care of his family. He was losing about 40% from the banks in the conversion rates. So to offset that, he started converting that money over to Bitcoin. He would send it over to his family. The, f the family would then, as soon as they got that Bitcoin, would cash out the money in USD. And instead of it taking a couple weeks and him losing 40%, it took a couple hours and it cost him a couple dollars. That's how powerful that is. So if you look at how um, a lot of crypto is being used presently, it is being used overseas and internationally to be able to send money without having to do a lot of the conversion rates and losing money by converting all of these things. So now that I've explained the you know cryptocurrency and, and what Bitcoin is, let's go talk to the let's talk about the underlying technology that is built on and, and the most important thing that people need to pay attention to blockchain so cryptocurrency is built upon blockchain so what is blockchain blockchain is uh, a system of nodes uh, that are built every 
10 minutes and they that are in it in each of these 10 minutes they are made into a block uh, which is then put on a chain so think of it as a giant database that cannot be messed up that cannot be that that once it is put into this database no one can go in and mess it up so and and just to, to give you a little bit of uh, an example of, of how if someone wants to try to go change the whole blockchain and why it is so powerful and, and why people are turning their attention to it, why um, Walmart is putting billions of dollars into blockchain, IBM's putting billions of dollars, Amazon, uh, Facebook's looking to get into to blockchain. Um, I saw an article today. The reason that it is so powerful is that it just makes logistics a lot easier and it also helps you uh, with a lot of different use cases, um, use cases. One prime example I'll give you right now: um, blockchain, Walmart. So, you have your toothbrush that you use in the morning to brush your, your teeth. Where did that toothbrush come from? It was built in China. Um, then, after it was built in China, it was sent it to this giant warehouse in China. Then, after that giant warehouse in China, it got sent to a giant warehouse in the U.S. And then, from that giant warehouse in the U.S., it got sent to your Walmart. And then, you went and bought that item. So, the logistics that goes into it, there's a ton of logistics that have to go into seeing where everything is coming from. But why is that important? So let's say you bought lettuce instead, and that lettuce caused you to have E. coli. There's E. coli breakout. How can Walmart quickly identify where that lettuce came from and eliminate the threat or go back and be able to check and see who else could be affected by this? So what they can do is go into the blockchain, see where that lettuce came from, see where other lettuce and what form that, that lettuce came from, identify the threat, and then be able to quickly fix and, and, and do some damage control to everything that's going on in that aspect. So that is one use case of blockchain and how it's powerful. Other use cases, there's going to be used in you know the medical fields with your uh, historical uh, records, making sure that do uh, doctors or whoever, in insurance companies, whomever, cannot go and, and change anything that's been in there. Another one could be in the, in the cars. And a, a prime example of that is uh, you know, like Carfax, when someone says, like, what has happened to a car before you buy it? You have a used salesman. You don't know what's all happened to that car. Blockchain would allow you to be able to see when it was purchased, who purchased it. Anytime it got an oil change, anytime something got fixed on the car, it would all be there. So you get a quick report and truly be understand what happened. So there are a ton of use cases and blockchain is here to stay. So then once you look at why cryptocurrency, I believe, is going to be a huge wave is that you know the cryptocurrency is built upon uh, the blockchain and is trying to build use cases that make our lives a lot easier and there are a lot of different examples of that but the first thing that I'll get into and explain why this is a huge opportunity and why I believe cryptocurrency <clears throat> excuse me is a great opportunity that is still yet to come I look at it as the the new internet of uh, my generation's age, right? So when it first came, a lot of people were optimistic, didn't think it was going to be this huge deal, um, and then it was. The ones that survived. So your, you know, your Googles, your um, Amazons, um, AOL was first in the game. They were first mover, and they made a lot of waves, but they didn't make it ultimately. You know, to equate it, uh, Bitcoin might be AOL. It, it, it might be the forefront leader in cryptocurrency, but it might not be the ultimate one. Um, some of these altcoins. Uh, might be future ones. You know, you look at Ethereum, you look at Dash, you look at some of these other ones right now. One of these can and could potentially be huge in the future. So to now go into uh, a quick recap of what happened over like the last two years. So in 2017, um, you know, everything's building up uh, in the crypto market. So you have Bitcoin that was, you know, at, at one point at about, you know, $2,000 is climbing, 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 gets up to about almost $20,000. During this time, you have all of these ICOs that come out. So ICOs are initial coin offerings. You have all of these new uh, cryptocurrencies that are being introduced to the market. And people are throwing a lot of money at it because they think, hey, um, this thing called Bitcoin's going up. A lot of these other um, altcoins, alternative coins to Bitcoin are going up. This, this has to be a new huge wave. So a lot of people just threw money hoping for the best. People were gambling. And the reason I say people are gambling was because if you don't understand the technology that one that you're investing in, if you don't understand the project that that particular company is working on, and if you can't explain what this investment is going towards and who's working on that team, it's probably you don't really understand what you're putting your money into. Therefore, you're just hoping for the best, 
which is why I say that's gambling. So what happened was in early 2018, uh, when different analysts, people that are uh, in the cryptocurrency game saw that there's this giant like bubble of information um, and, and not just that. So let's dial that back real quick. So you had, you know, somewhere between uh, 150 to 300 um, cryptocurrencies that were around during this giant rush. And then all of a sudden you get to about 1800 coins um, over the course of a couple months. So of those 1800 coins, only about a hundred had an actual working product. You can see where there's a big issue with that. So if you don't even have a product that you can show that works and everything else that people are building towards or aspiring to do, that's a big issue. So people that were in it started taking out their money. Um, and then some people were even shortened um, during that time. And these investors that got in, in early in 2018, they started losing their money. What do they do? They freaked out and they said, oh, I should take out my money. I don't want to lose too much. And so as more and more started happen, more and more of that started happening, you then go from a bull run where the prices are going up to a bear market where prices started going down. And so they started trickling, trickling, trickling down as uh, cryptocurrency is tr basically trying to, to find its its base. It's trying to find um, how low and where can it stabilize. So that brings you down to the end of 2018 and now, now it's uh, early 2019. So the market's starting to stabilize. The projects that are being worked on right now they are, you know, they have teams that are putting in a lot of effort. They have money that's and resources that are still being poured into them, and it's still building up. So a lot of people might have said you've missed the wagon, you missed your opportunity to be in the game. I personally believe that's not the case. I believe we're still at the beginning, and I believe that this is still going to be a really, really huge opportunity, and that you should be paying attention to what is happening in this field. Um, I'll kind of just leave it at that. That is like. The briefest summary of cryptocurrency and blockchain that I could give. Um, I know that might be still quite a bit to chew, but with this information, I hope that like that gives you um, some will to want to go learn a little bit more for yourself. Uh, that you can go and educate yourself a little bit more, spark your curiosity a little bit, and and you now want to go and dive a little deeper. Not necessarily in everything, uh, but some things here and there uh, that made sense to you. More than anything, the, the biggest advoc advocation that I can give to you right now is educate yourself. This is an opportunity, and the way that you can capitalize on any opportunity is to continue to do more research, do your homework, and make sure you make sound um, investment opportunities in the future. But that's all I'm going to wrap up with you today. Um, I hope you found this informative. And um, if you like this content, if you like this material, I'm happy to go a little bit deeper into different things um, as well that are in the space. Uh, but um, thank you for joining me for an episode of uh, Crypto Current. Uh, stay crypto current. This has been another episode of Crypto Current, bringing you one step closer to becoming a crypto and blockchain aficionado. We look forward to giving you the latest in crypto news and analyses next week. Stay crypto current.